Hey dummies, welcome back to Game Baking, a show where I dissect and discuss the creation of my video games from start to finish. Way back in June of 2021, I decided to partake in the GMTK Game Jam. Game Maker's Toolkit, or GMTK for short, is a YouTube channel created by Mark Brown that discusses and analyzes game design concepts in both broad strokes and fine detail. Every year since 2017, Mark Brown has hosted a game jam that is so massive it causes itch.io, the website it's usually hosted on to completely collapse due to the sheer amount of people uploading games at the same time. Each year is bigger oh, than the last, and this past year's was no different, with a total of 5,729 games submitted to the gem. Let's jump right in. Theme. That year, the theme was Joined Together, which is quite similar in concept to the theme from the Brackies Jam that I participated in back in February of 2021, so I really had to think outside the box to do something different with this one. I think it's an okay theme, but it is a little generic. I think it's kind of generic looking. And this makes it difficult to interpret in any other way than its literal definition. You'll have games where characters or objects are attached together in chains, ropes, or any other connectors or bonding agents, games where two or more mechanics are connected, or games where two or more narratives are intertwined. And don't get me started with the amount of games where you have to switch between two or more characters. Every jam I've submitted to so far last year has had at least one, and this time around was definitely no different. I decided not to go at it alone this time and joined up with a team of incredibly talented people. Of course, I had the usuals, Travis and Tadeo, handling the music and prop modeling respectively. But I was also accompanied by two new team members, Aoi, who handled character design and did all the illustration work, and Happy Head, who worked on all the character modeling and animations. We put our heads together and came up with a whole bunch of different ideas. So many ideas. Too many ideas, in fact. Too many Rick! Too many! Many of which were probably overambitious for a game jam. There was one where we played as different body parts of a Frankenstein's monster type of character, and you had to switch between controlling each body part individually around the level to solve platforming puzzles and make your way to the center room where you can all recombine into a single being again. There was another one where we'd play as a giant robot with a magnet or something, and you had to avoid missiles or... Man, it's been way too long and I'm actually having a hard time remembering what that idea was supposed to be. But we eventually landed on an idea where we join modules together to form electronic components in a completely unique way that is definitely not like Overcooked. Alright, fine, yes, it's just Overcooked but with machine components instead of ingredients. But after some brainstorming with the team, Aoi ended up pitching a pretty great twist on the idea. We'd essentially be creating components for a robot that guards our prison cell and we'd have to sneak in dangerous modules into the components when it's not looking at us in order to cause it to malfunction. This would essentially add a stealth and strategy element to the idea, which played well with the theme of joining things together. We're basically joining components together and joining genres and themes together. The meat. I started by putting a list of mechanics together. For the character, I would need moving, dashing, picking up and dropping items called modules, throwing modules, interacting with the component board, and getting caught. A lot of those would require modules, so the character controller I wrote would first focus on all the non-module related mechanics. We'll go over one thing at a time though, so let's back up a moment. I started by making the character move and dash. There's no limit to the dash mechanic, I just made it so that you can't dash again while you're already dashing. Seeing as the view started off isometric, I had to offset the control by 45 degrees to make the movement relative to the camera, but eventually scrapped it when we decided to keep the camera facing forward. I then implemented module interaction. You could now pick up and drop modules, and instead of using a different button to handle throwing the modules instead of dropping them, I decided to just apply your momentum to the module when you hit the drop button. So if you're dashing when dropping, it'll fly forward a bit, but if you're at a full stop, it'll just fall flat. I used the same button for picking up and throwing. Next was the module mechanics. Module spawning, module discarding, identifying dangerous modules, randomizing module bins, plugging modules into the board. Oh, this one's a doozy, and you'll see why in a moment. <laughs> 
other mechanics included the robot guards cone of vision, the robot catching you with a dangerous module, randomizing module recipes, checking whether the component you created fits the required recipe, handling rounds, a timer, and the win and lose states. Whew. I added a simple collision check on the modules when you drop them that verifies if you've dropped them on the board or the trash bin. The trash bin discards the module and returns it to the pool. Yes, I'm using pooling for modules. Let me know if you'd like a Unity Roundtable episode about object pooling. And if it's touching the board, it would instantly teleport to a position around the board view so you can manually drag it onto the board later. When the player interacts with the board, the game switches to a first person point of view and displays all the modules you've brought to the board thus far. This would allow you to manually connect the modules to the board. This is when you get to replace certain modules with their dangerous equivalents in order to defeat the robot guard. Meanwhile, Aoi came up with some really great concept art for the characters. The main character would be a short human chef and the guard was a big robot with tank-like caterpillar tracks. Happy Head immediately got to work on modeling and animating them. Here's how they turned out. When implementing them into the game, I used Unity's animation layers and blend trees to animate the torso and legs of the main character separately. This meant that we didn't need separate animations for moving or dashing while carrying a module. The top would switch states depending on whether or not the character is carrying anything, and the legs would switch from being idle, running, or dashing depending on your movement state. It was my first time handling animations that way, and I have no idea why I had never thought of doing it that way before. Now it was time to implement the component board. I started by putting in a floating board object somewhere off screen and set up a second virtual camera that points to it. The second camera has a higher priority than the main one and is disabled by default. Switching between both views was as simple as enabling and disabling that second camera. Cinemachine would handle the transition blending and since it has a higher priority, I didn't even have to disable the main virtual camera when enabling the board one. Interacting with the board would trigger the camera and would also disable the character's controls. I added points around the board for modules to randomly choose from when being added to the board. We decided on three categories of modules, large, medium, and small. The component board would have one slot for each category of modules, and the recipes that the game generates at the start of each round would also be made up of one module per category. For some reason, I decided to add cables to represent you dragging a module onto the board instead of moving the entire module itself. I honestly cannot remember why, but I guess it looks alright, so why not? Once you've attached one module to each slot, the round ends, and the game checks to see if all the modules match the ones that were selected for the recipe. Of course, you can always replace modules with dangerous ones. Before I get into how those work, however, I'll walk you through how the robot guard functions. We wanted the robot guard to be a constant looming threat, so we gave it a cone of vision that you would have to constantly avoid if you wanted to use dangerous modules. The cone of vision is literally just a big cone-shaped object that I made using Pro Builder. Bruh. Essentially, if the robot's cone of vision collides with a dangerous module, it would shoot a laser at it to destroy the module and then immediately destroy the bin that the module came from, making it no longer possible for you to use that module in that round's recipe. This happens whether or not you're actually carrying the dangerous module. I also added a UI indicator that informs you whether or not you're currently in its cone of vision. Once you've managed to drop a dangerous module onto the board, you can now drag it to the appropriate slot. There are also three kinds of dangerous modules, small, medium, and large, for you to use in place of whatever the recipe demands. The more dangerous modules you manage to slip onto the board that round, the more damage you'll deal to the robot. While all this was happening, Travis was busy composing some pretty sweet music for the game and putting together sound effects for me to use. Tadeo was also hard at work modeling all the individual modules that Aoi had conceptualized. Take a look. I implemented the module and component board models and used the Tune Kit shaders by Dusty Room to give everything that consistent, cel-shaded look. I also threw in the music and sound effects that Travis produced to tie it all together. And finally, in order to add a bit of extra challenge, I made it so that the robot regains one health for each non-dangerous module it consumes at the end of each round. And to prevent players from taking all the time they need to collect nothing but dangerous modules, I also added a timer that counts down and ends the round when complete. The countdown gets slightly faster each round, which allows the game's difficulty to ramp up. The longer you take to feed the robot all the necessary dangerous components, the harder the game will get. I compiled and submitted the game to the jam, initially named Food for Bot, a riff on Food for Thought, but renamed it to Culinary Hazard after the jam's voting period ended. The game ended up getting an overall score of 3.167 out of 5, which isn't too bad, but with 5,730-ish submissions to the GMTK game jam, the game ended up landing at the 2,081st position. If you'd like to try it 
out for yourself. The game is available to play for free via the link in the description. A huge thank you to Tadeo, Awi, Happy Head, and Travis for participating in this jam with me. If you'd like to see me do more with this game, you're welcome to let me know in the comments below or on my Discord server. Support me on Patreon to join the Domi Army and get access to exclusive content, links in the description. Until then, thanks for watching. If you like this devlog, then subscribe to this channel for more. And maybe give this video a like.